Hi, welcome. Today we are proceeding with our previous session about data reduction process. So first of all, I will preview some of the discussion. Then I will go towards the today's model that that we are going to demonstrate. So in the data, uh, we, asked, we this video starts with the uh, topic of data reduction process. So what is the background? So the background is that when we are using regression process and we have too many independent variables and the data collected is from the same respondent. So if you assume it's a, it's a questionnaire and you're collecting from different people and each questionnaire have different variables. So and, and in other case, if you have a secondary data and you collected many variables for a same country, it, let it be a time series data or a cross section data or a panel data, what will happen that since the respondents are same in the survey and the countries are country same for the secondary data so there are chances that these variable have uh, some correlations with each other and and if there is a correlation between independent variables it will lead to multicollinearity and and the, what are the uh, pre in previous sessions we discussed that uh, how to discuss multi uh, how to detect multicollinearity using r and then we discussed uh, the few tests like VIF, tolerance, and scatter plots to identify in depth if there is presence of multicollinearity in the model. Then we started to discuss its solutions. So first solution that was discussed uh, in the previous session was uh, using a stepwise regression. So stepwise regression is usually used when when the, you have too many variables and there is no the, there is no need to keep any specific variables. So you are actually doing an exploratory study. So so all we can add is that stepwise regression is used when there is when the study is exploratory. We, exploratory means there is no actually. Uh, importance of any particular variable you are actually throwing a net on a wider set of variables and you're seeing how many of them tend to have a significant effect on the dependent variable so it means this method uses statistical method to reduce the insignificant variables uh, so that's that's the way it will select the variable it will select based upon the significance uh, and the test that it will use it will use the t tests and it's it's P values so uh, so let me add it will use so then the advantage of this test is it's very simple and straightforward if the method will uh, this method will not consider the theoretical importance of variable even if they are insignificant so it will it will kick the variable out if it is insignificant it will not consider any any importance or any need of that variable if it is required so it will be out. So stepwise regression may be may sometimes suggest you significant shortest variable which were not intended to be selected in the first place. So you may end up with the variables which were not important in the first place. So if you have some uh, priority list, then a stepwise regression may not help you. So maybe because they are they are uh, maybe uh, the the variable which are not needed are because they are controlling variables. And, uh, and and other variable which were actually the base of the study is removed so the second method that we discussed was the the data reduction method so data reduction means if you have proposed many variables then you need to reduce the variables based upon logic or based upon their importance so we uh, we studied principal component analysis in SPSS so this method helps in reducing number of variables to be used in the model based upon their theoretical contribution in, uh, in the variance of the dependent variable so it reduces the variable based upon how much each variable has explained the portion of dependent variable so uh, so so that's this is the way it, it goes through uh, it, it does not uh, ensure that the selected variables will be significant it's only sees the the importance of that variable with respect to the variance that has been changed because of that variable so we have covered that variable in our previous video you can you can follow it through the link shared here so third method is uh, the structure detection method using principal access factoring so this is a topic that we are focusing today so in this method uh, this method is used when we have many variables and we don't want to reduce all of them we want to keep them because uh, be, uh, because the, the variables uh, are forming subgroups uh, be because the variables are important and they are covering several dimensions 
so so this this method can help if your selected variables are uh, covering different dimensions of of uh, paths that that can influence the dependent variable so so th they are covering different dimensions so it means if there are more than one variable in each dimension they they tend to have high correlation with each other so this process will create uh, subgroups of the collinear variables to avoid multicollinearity so as simple as that so what it will do is it will go towards if for it will it will uh, make groups so in the, in the demonstration we will go in detail so here today will be more will be selecting a model based upon uh, based on making subgroups of the variables or or in, in other words we can say to make a structure of the variables that are being selected for the so this is the diagram that that is uh, uh, that is representing the structure detection method suppose this is your dependent variable it can be unknown or known and then uh, that's why we written is latent dependent variable for for others you can have this as a known variable and then you have five independent variables variable one two three four five so what this structure detection is suggesting that that rather than reducing variables from five to four or three the, you can do is that if if the three of them are following some logic some common theory then you can make that index of that theory and other two as other so it means first of all this method what it will do it will propose these two indices based upon the tests tests that it have in uh, within this method so actually what what literature says that this method is also called the confirmatory analysis so what what is confirmatory analysis so this method will help you to uh, create a structure out of your data and then it it will let you lead you to confirm the uh, the further test will help you to confirm that structure uh, and that structure will be actually the new theory or the theory that you are actually testing so hopefully you understood this diagram that uh, rather than reducing the five variables to smaller number it will make subgroups and since these three are nearer to each other they are supposed to have same group and these two are nearer to each other they are following similar groups so it means uh, the, the the method will first of all find possible indices that it can make then it will reduce the number of indices to optimal level and then it will create groups out of the independent variable here we will discuss the data set that is used for this uh, example so this data set is extracted from the SPSS uh, documentary uh, and documentation that that can help you to understand the process that is done in SPSS so here what you knew is that this is the data of some telephone company which has shared say, few, uh, the data of your client so each line is the data of its client its first is region and its tenure how old is the client is his age his marital status his address his income and all the relevant variables so further he has used which type of uh, which type of service they are using the data includes the this means how the long long tenure calls and so there the variables are relevant to the services that they offer and further these variables are also converted in uh, uh, so these variables are there so, so for the uh, example so let us start with the um, uh, structure detection process so for that we go to analyze and dimension reduction factor and here we select the variables so our example variables start from uh, it's long distance calling long distance last, last month to electronic billing so it will go to electronic billing yes so these are the independent variables so this study is based on an idea that they are they are grouping their uh, services data of different services and looking at what are the three different kinds of customers uh, there are there or what are the what are the different types of uh, ways the their services are being changing so 
so so it means we are need to look at the patterns in the sales of this company so these are these are the services all all of them so first of all we'll go in descriptives and we need to this KMO and Bartlett test it's important when you are going towards the the structure detection process then in ex extraction you need to go to principal access factoring and and scree plot okay continue then in a rotation you need to do the very max approach okay and okay and then in scores you need to see make a regression so it means when you it, what it is saying that if you want to make an index out of it then how it should make an index should it use the bartlett approach or endinson rubin approach or regression so regression is more popular so we go towards regression approach. then in options what we need to do is that we need to arrange the coefficients in terms of its value so that uh, we know the bigger value uh, it's in decreasing order secondly we need to suppress the small coefficients so let it be 0 0.3 so that so that uh, all the smaller coefficients are removed so that the table is not jumbled and we can understand this patterns okay when we continue so we will do the okay so it will do the process so first of all we need to understand this KMO table in the KMO table first of all it's a KMO sample adequacy test okay so as we saw the diagram and diagram was forming a circle just like in the, um, the data reduction process of fact analysis so so and if the data is circle it's it's a three dimensional circle we call it a sphere so Bartlett's test says that is the data forming sphere sufficiently the data should make a sufficient sphere so that we can assume that there is a center and and all of the things that we discussed in the previous video so the Bartlett test is significant which means data is sufficiently forming a sphere secondly is this is this data is adequate enough to do the structure process to form subgroups uh, so this value should be larger than 0 0.6 so it is big enough and we can assume that data have subgroups secondly here there are commonalities table so first column shows that the correlation of this uh, each variable with other variables so these are high enough and they are not that important but they are, most of them are very high so this shows that all the variables have some similarities and the extraction values are correlation of that variable with the indices that are formed so this should be high too uh, so uh, most of them you can see are high the lowest value you can only notice is 0 0.308 okay so for reliable estimates the ideal way is to reduce uh, remove these variables which have very small extraction values so that your your structure is more reliable but even if you keep it the tests that are done later on can uh, tell you that this was not good variable you can remove it so these are the variables that uh, are uh, so so what what this process is doing so we give it 19 variables okay to form subgroups so the maximum subgroups that this study can make is 19 one group for each variable so it starts with 19 indicators or 19 subgroups and, and then it compares the explanation power of each subgroup with the, with the dependent variable. So we can see that the, these are the variation explained by each subgroup as compared to the total variation. So you can notice that the first is 33%, then 18%, and 14%, then so on it is reducing. So when you, when you explore it, you can notice that the first four variables had uh, correlation uh, eigenvalue more than one it means it is suggesting that um, there are there are four variables that could have uh, that could make uh, th there are four subgroups so when you go to an extraction sums case so the last one has a small value but if you go to a rotative sum you can notice that the first four has uh, more than one and the total explanation power is 65 so it means uh, out of uh, so it means if you do the arithmetics, you can see the, the variables have been reduced from 6, 19 to 4. So there is a lot of, uh, the, there is a huge increase in the simplicity of the model. But on the other side, the, the efficiency of the model is reduced from 100 to 65. So, so, uh, so it means you need, need to do the maths. If the uh, simplicity is higher than the uh, eff efficiency fall, it means that method is good. So in this example, the simplicity is higher than the 
uh, efficiency uh, fall so we will go to with the process now what is the other way to find how many factors need to be uh, indexes need to be made is the scree plot so in scree plot you can see after four the slope has from the steep to become it became flat from steep to flat it means the four is the cutoff point so that's why this method has selected four when you go into uh, the rotated factor matrix you can note that uh, they are already arranged in a in a in an increase decreasing order and it is looks clean because the smaller values are removed we, you remember earlier that we said that they hide the values which are less than point less than point three so here we can see that the first first one two three four five six variables are in group one okay and the sixth variable has in, is in two but the uh, one is a one has the highest value so we assume that the first first six variables first six variables are in group one so they are similar to each other secondly the other one two three four five six seven eight nine so next nine values are in group two uh, we notice that they are similar to each other they are highly correlated in the group two and if even if they are values in two the the higher one is in the first one so we can assume that they are uh, in in the group two and the, for the third we can see that it is uh, 0 0.95 0 0.91 these two variables in the group three and the last 0 0.9398 and 0 0.779 is in group four so it means there are there are four groups uh, that can be made out of the variable selected so if you already know the dimensions of the variable from which the, the discipline they are coming from you can easily name these indices that these indices actually is this but on the other side the, the naming of indices is not that important but but to do interpretation you need to have some logical name out of it so you can you can see that the first index is actually the services that they are using it's toll free calls and the three way calling or call forwarding caller id and the second index is actually the technology that they're using equipment wireless internet electronic billing and then there is a long distance calls it's a different type and the last is the the calling card that they have used so it means you can notice here is that luckily all four indices are actually explaining different dimensions of the product that has been sold so this way you notice that there are uh, four indices so this way what happened that if you go in the SPSS and you, if you go in the end of the data file you will have four new data files and new columns so these are the four new indices that have been made and you already know their 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 names which are proposed by us and you already know what are the in, in, in incidents of these variables so first you can say that how they are increasing you already know that these four are made out of the 19 variables so using these four will definitely reduce the multi continuity in the model because because they are uh, they, the variables are reduced from 19 to 4 and and also it's it is not reducing the variables it's actually making us one more layer so it means none of the variable has been reduced or wasted at just like previous two methods hopefully you like this video and you uh, understood what what is the main idea behind doing the structure detection process so uh, if you have any queries you can you can comment and hopefully we can jointly learn together thank you very much